Our next video with our demo students will cover navigating through modules, through classwork, the teacher landing page, and downloading and completing assignments. Here, I'm going to show you a couple examples of the teacher landing page and the information that you can find on each. So to go into an individual class, you have a few different options for getting into the course. One is to click on your menu and to scroll down to your course and to click on the course there. Option two is to click the picture icon for your course. And option three is to click on this play button, which would take you to the activities. Typically, we'll just click on the picture icon to take us into one of our courses. This course is our chemistry course taught by Mrs. Wallen. And it's a good example of some landing page content that you can find. So on each teacher's landing page, the teacher name and contact information, including email and phone, should be listed for each teacher. That way students are able to get in touch with their teachers as they have questions. As we scroll down on the landing page, you'll also notice when live lessons are. For our K through five students, they'll have two live lessons per day. Um, one focusing primarily on ELA and the other focusing primarily on math. The additional core subjects and electives will be thrown in as well. For our six through eight students, they have two live lessons per week in each content area. For example, there will be two math lessons, there will be two ELA lessons, two social studies lessons, et cetera. Electives do not necessarily have a live lesson attached. And for our high school kids, again, nine through 12, we have two live lessons per week available. These live lessons are geared to be short, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes in length. That way students can get information and they can get on with completing the lesson on the computer. Live lessons are not mandatory, but our best resource in the district are our teachers, and we feel that it is best for students to attend those live lessons to get that face time with teachers and to get instruction on things that they don't understand. If we scroll down further, um, one, we can see that our meetings are occurring in Microsoft Teams through this particular team, and our teachers also have their open office hour time. This is time for students to log in, on Teams and just ask any individual questions that they might have about the work that they're currently completing. A second example in the course that we're gonna do as an example is our Modern World History course. Modern World History this year is taught by Mrs. Becker. And again, you can see that even though the structure may be a little bit different, the same information should be there for each landing page. So Mrs. Becker has her contact information, she has our course syllabus hyperlinked here, um, as well as a hyperlink to get to the Microsoft team to access the live lesson. Information on when the live lesson time is, as well as office hours, is in this chart. And Mrs. Becker has also chosen to highlight academic honesty and plagiarism within her landing page content. For each course, there will be a plagiarism acknowledgement that needs completed by the student to acknowledge that they understand what plagiarism is. And there's a short blurb for them to read um, and some websites to access for resources regarding plagiarism. Plagiarism is any intentional use of somebody else's ideas or thoughts and presenting them as one's own. So an example would be Googling answers to a worksheet and just copying and pasting answers down instead of actually going through the lesson content, learning the material and coming up with your own thoughts and ideas. It's extremely important not to plagiarize. Our teachers use the district plagiarism detector, turnitin.com, to check for plagiarism. Now, to start going through some of the individual course content, we'll use modern history as an example. One, we want to make sure that we're in the correct marking period. So right now, marking period two is chosen because that's what we're in within the Warren County School District. Once marking period three starts, you would choose that or marking period four once that starts respectively. But right now we're in marking period two and all open content is available here underneath this marking period two folder. To open up the folder, we have one of two options. We can either click on the folder or we can click this arrow. The arrow will open up all the folders that are nested underneath. One would be the resources tab 
in which you can see a getting started option. This shows you how to start going through your courses and how to upload some work, which I'll give you an example of in our next video as well. Online tools, the course syllabus, and that plagiarism acknowledgement. If we scroll down to actual course content here in the age of discovery, you can see that Mrs. Becker has this broken down into multiple different lessons and the exam for age of discovery. So for our example, we're going to click into lesson two, the age of discovery, and we'll go into our first review assignment. So review number two in age of discovery, if we click there, it will open up within our browser. So you'll notice here, this was already given a grade. So it has a green check mark next to it. If there is a grade assigned, whether it was graded by the teacher or it was given an automatic zero because it's past its due date, there will be a green check mark that shows up. If there is a zero because it is past the automatic due date, you still have time to complete that assignment. That assignment should be completed and submitted as soon as possible once you have gone through the lesson content. All work must be completed and submitted within the marking period that it is assigned. That's really important. So in here, we have review number two in Age of Discovery. The instructions for the assignment are located up here. Download the attachment as you read through the lessons to find the key terms. Submit your completed review to the submission folder. So this would be an example of a submission drop box, which is here. Now, since there is a score already assigned, this submit my work is not available. But if it is not, there will be a plus button here. And you just hit the plus and it will take you into your documents or wherever you saved your item and you can then upload the assignment. Down here are the attachments. And if we click on the attachment, it downloads to our computer and we can open it up and have the assignment to work on and complete. All documents that need completed are either available as a Word document for students to edit or as an editable PDF. If it is an editable PDF, we highly suggest that you save the document first, then you complete the document, and then you save it a second time. That way, when you are downloading it, you are downloading the blank document, you are inputting your material after you have saved it the first time, and then after your material is input, you save it a second time to make sure that the information is actually saved within your document. That way you aren't getting frustrated over the fact that you have completed material twice. So this would be an example of how to download an attachment. And then this is a good example of the Dropbox. Under the view grade details, if there is a submission, you can go in here and see the grade information as shown in the grade book video tutorial earlier. Down at the bottom, I can just go to our next activity, which is a new era in science. So this says there is an activity on page three of the lesson. It looks like this. When you complete, please upload it to the submission folder. And then further down, there is our actual lesson content. This is what a typical lesson looks like within our virtual learning department. The title of the lesson will be at the top. If there are the drop down arrows, this allows you to navigate each individual slide. So you can get kind of an idea of what we're looking at within the lesson. The objectives for the lesson will be written here, along with key terms and skills needed for, for the course. As we are navigating using the interior scroll bar, we can go down to the bottom and click next to continue on. Once we're here, the lessons involve a combination of reading, diagrams, photographs, charts, and videos to watch, along with some interactive um, material within each lesson. So you will mat navigate through the lesson using the arrows to go from slide to slide, reading the content as you go and watching the videos that are available. Underneath the videos is a transcript so that you have a PDF transcript of what the videos say, just in case you need that as well to assist you. 
before we continue on and finish with this video, I want to show you the toolbar and the different things that are available on the toolbar. If you notice in the upper right hand corner, this arrow. If you use the arrow, you can drag the toolbar to wherever you want on the screen. If you use the arrow next to it, it will expand the toolbar so you can see everything that's available. So the first part of the toolbar is the play button. If we hit the play button, it will begin reading the page or speak the current selection from the very beginning of the page. So this will read everything that's on the page, starting with the title of the slide. Subject matter, the other revolution. Martin Luther's reformation wasn't the only challenge to- To stop the play playback, simply hit the stop button or the pause button. If you do not want the entire slide read to you, and there is only a specific part that you would like read out loud, you can use the pointer here and then click within your slide and it will begin reading from where you click. What do these two kinds of revolutions have to do with one another? Quiet. Again, hitting stop or pause. We'll stop the speech. And if we click on the finger again, um, it will take that feature off. If we are having trouble with a specific word, for example, astronomy. If we highlight that word, we have a number of different options available to us. The first is the translate, which would allow you to translate this into another language. Here is a dictionary definition. And if you click, it will give you the definition for the word that you're looking at. And this is a picture dictionary definition if it's available. Just something additional, especially helpful for our K through five students. The last two tools in the toolbar are the screen mask. And the screen mask is here, and this will highlight only a certain part of the page. So if your student has some difficulty keeping along with where they're reading, um, this is a really useful tool to kind of move, kind of like the old ruler that we used to use in school to keep track of where we were reading. And then lastly is the magnifying glass. This enlarges text as it is read aloud. So this combines the point to click and the magnifying glass, and we'll what give you at the top of the screen of revolutions have to do with one another. Quite the words you... as they're going through. Again, we can move that toolbar below. And if we use that magnifier again, we'll see that what it is now two kinds of revolutions have to do with not hidden. Here it gives you some options, uh, the different text highlight colors, the speech mode, either click or or hover the size of the magnifying glass and how fast things are read to you. Cancel. So that's it for this video on navigating through the lessons and through the modules. Make sure that as you are doing this, you are using your calendar and your gradebook to see what you need to do next. And as you complete lessons, they'll show up with these green check marks. Follow your due dates and that will help you know where you need to be within each module and activity.